Welcome to Thick and Thin by Mo and Sarah, the podcast where I have the chance to have a chill discussion with a new person every week that I never met before. I have had the pleasure today to meet Martial. So let me introduce Martial for you. He's an entrepreneur coming from uh, France. He grew up in France. He loves jogging on the beach and also doing trails in the desert. He's a very good cook at home. You, he cooks uh, every day for his fiance. I can mention also that he's a vegetarian and he has the chance also to have a very close group of friends uh, coming from France. Uh, 10 guys, guys and girls that he met uh, during his studies in France and that uh, are also in Dubai. So how did you like this uh, first introduction, uh, Marcel? That sounds good. It's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely good start. With. All right, let's get to it. So my first question for you was um, if you had three months, no responsibility, money is not a question like uh, Limited budget. Okay. What would you do during this next three months? Like starting tomorrow, I mean. Okay. I think there is a few things coming to my mind. I think I would want to travel. Uh, I've been traveling a lot for the past few years. And now that I've, that I'm more sedentarized, that I stopped moving around the world, I miss it a bit. But I think maybe I would spend, I would break the time to do a bit of a retreat. Uh, I feel like I've been overwhelmed with a lot of work recently, so oh, trying okay. to get an experience of disconnection, I don't know, going to a monastery somewhere in India or something. Wow. That, not for three months, probably <laughs> two, two weeks of that, okay. then two weeks in Europe uh, to enjoy some of the summertime with my friends and probably then the rest of the time with my fiance. I would travel, I think, a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be the main... Uh, so you will go to, uh, you said a monastery, then Europe, any places you never went to, you would like to, to go? Mm, or maybe some place you would like to come yeah. back to. I think I have places that I would love to come back to. I yeah. I like the Mediterranean overall, so there, yeah. there could be like I could go to the Balear uh, Islands, or probably Menorca, finding a small nice house on the beach. I have unlimited budget price, so I can get yeah, yeah. very big, nice yeah, yeah, where yeah. I can bring a lot of people in uh, in the south of France. Oh yeah, uh, or in Menorca. Where else? Um, I think I would like to. I mean, w what I like the most in life is getting a house, bringing all my friends there. And that's where I'm the most happy in life. So probably getting a nice villa somewhere, that would be the thing. Getting a nice villa in a place where okay. people can easily travel and get just people like passing by full oh, summer. Yeah, yeah that, that would sound like a... So what's the day looking like in this villa with your friends? Um, I mean, I think we, we wake up late because we, <laughs> we, we go to bed late. I would say uh, we wake up in the morning, everybody has his own tempo. We, st we join around the breakfast table, have a bit of a chat, few people stay there, other ones go to buy some stuff at the market. I would be part of the one that do a bit of sports in the garden mm -hmm. while the other one are preparing the food. Um, then we probably go around the pool uh, early on, maybe open a little bit of like a bottle of rosé and chill out, do a bit of sports. I'm just very, very cozy, like no, 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 no crazy activity, just hanging out, having fun, laughing. And, uh, and uh, I, li I like, I, I'm looking at organizing my uh, bachelor party. Okay. That's pretty much what I mean. I, I'm thinking about it and honestly, like just simplicity, the people that I love uh, and time is all I need. So you were asking me about time and uh, what I would do with it. Yeah. Just bring the people that I would. Sounds like a plan. What is something that I wouldn't believe about you? I, there is few. Uh, I grew up in a Buddhist family, which is quite, quite unusual, I think, uh, growing up in Paris. So that's the first thing. So I yeah, both parents f all in on their spirituality. I met the Dalai Lama several times when I was young. I was, uh, so I grew up in, um, I mean, oh, I was talking about the retreat earlier. Uh, every summer we're going for a month of retreat with my parents in the south of France in a Tibetan Buddhist mm -hmm. setup. So I mean, so that could be one that is quite unusual. Oh yeah, a spiritual. Very unusual. Uh, I, I would like to know more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I, I can. Yeah, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I mean, it's something that when I was quite young, when I was young, it was a bit strange for me because you know, you want to, you want to fit, you want to be like everyone else. So right. my name was Martial, it was like uh, uh, unusual. <laughs> my parents were Buddhist. I, mean, I wanted to be called Nikolai and have Christian parents. Like, you know, to be like, yeah, exactly. Different. And no, now, are they Asian, your parents? Or absolutely not. No, 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 just, uh, I think they were even more uh, surprising. Uh, they were just on their own, uh, on their own quest. So I was lucky to be surrounded by people that have been just chasing a deeper meaning in life and trying yeah. to be like stronger and better and more advanced human being. Uh, so I'm a bit, I feel like a little bit like Obelix. Uh, there is this, uh, I mean, you know, about this, uh, um, anime Asterix and Obelix yeah. and uh, Obelix fold into the, um, the the magic potion and, and I fold into the magic potion at Speed Ready very young so okay. I was lucky to get uh, again like um, a relation to life that is um, yeah, very inspired by this. I really relate to that because you know my dad 
is uh, so my mom is from Morocco, but my dad is French. Mm -hmm. I grew up in uh, Auvergne, so we're in the middle of France, like countryside. And he met my mom in Morocco, actually on a spiritual retreat, uh, when he was converting to Islam. And then after that, he, a few years later, he also uh, converted to uh, uh, the Rastafari culture. Right. So, and he's a very spiritual person also. So, so there is a connect, there is already a connection. Exactly, connect exactly. Right. So if you go to his apartment, there's a lot of uh, books and readings about uh, many religion. He's not mm -hmm. actually, I would say, like okay. a classic person uh, that follows one uh, religion. Good. So uh, I kind of relate to... Yeah, and I relate to that also. I would connect very well, I think, with your dad. And also Probably the struggle of uh, trying to fit in when you're young and you maybe don't understand the richness of, of, of it. No, but I'm, I'm sure you see it now as a blessing the same way as I do. So it's like richness, open-minded. They didn't just fall into something. They've been uh, searching and, I mean, doing their own quest. Mm -hmm. People are quite, uh, quite lucky about that. Yeah, also I like the fact of not... Uh, you know, sometimes with... Uh, when you grew up in a religion, like for example, from my mother's side, where everybody is a Muslim for generations, they kind of have a, like traditional intertwined with the spirituality and really uh, hard to not follow rules. And you don't even have the opportunity to think about the rules and say, uh, is it really, uh, has, has it a meaning for me? Uh, has it, uh, if I read the, the readings, is this, uh, do I have the same interpretation of the everybody or do I have my own interpretation? And having my dad having his own personal journey, let me, I think, uh, really have my own uh, view of uh, my own uh, religion. Uh, I, I relate. A little bit yeah. and... That's kind of a good transition for the next question. Okay. was around... Uh, so basically, I feel like immigrants, specifically in Dubai, there's kind of for every immigrant here, come kind of something they're running from, from mm. their uh, home country. Yeah. So I'm asking you the question, what did you run from when coming to, to Dubai? If there's something. Yeah, yeah no, there, there is definitely something. Okay. Where we're not <laughs> in this case. Um, when I was 21 years old, I dropped, uh, high school, I dropped my business school to start building a company which I've been running for five years. Uh, it was a video recruitment platform, wh wh whatever. And in the meantime, I was in a relationship uh, very young, it was, which lasted six years. And basically my relationship and my company, which were the two things that I had put in the most of my energy into, they both broke at the same time. So I failed the company and broke up with the, uh, this girl at the time. And so I was really like, I didn't have any more money. I was like, I, I, I really had nothing. And I was just looking for I mean, for, for my next move, uh, and I got, I got, I, I had some friends, I mentioned to you that I had some friends living in Dubai, um, who were mentioning me that I should come there. They could have been uh, a job offer for me here, but if I wanted to give it a shot, I needed to come and have the interview, but I was completely broke. I didn't have any euros. I remember my father is a bookmaker. He makes nice books. And I was like stealing books from the, from the house. And I was selling them in a store in France called Giberjean, which like buys yeah, yeah. So that's how I was sustaining myself for a few months, but it was like one meal per day, really like I had nothing anymore. Wow. And I go to see one of my friends and I tell him like, I might have this job opportunity in Dubai, but I need to go. So I will do a, I will do a loan to be able to, and wow. I was telling him the thing and he was like, yeah, no loan. He takes his phone and tell me like, when do you leave? Book the tickets, like you're leaving in two weeks, bye. See you. And so what? Uh, from what was just an ID, I mean, it happened. I arrived here and I found a job uh, directly. It's kind of the opposite of people would think like you're coming to Dubai for taxes and uh, you have uh, this, uh, you're already a millionaire and you come uh, in your villa, kind of the zero. I, I, totally I, 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 lived, I lived on my friend's couch for three months and I didn't at all come to escape anything. Yes, I was escaping a personal situation, but not escaping anything fiscal. Uh, once you're into it and you get used to making a little bit more money and when you like to overspend a bit like I do, it's difficult to like th then coming back to France and having to, to, to pay the taxes and reorganizing yourself. Yeah, of course. It's something, it's, it's something a bit different, but it was not the, no, there was no such, no such thing. I mean, I, I, I came in uh, broke and uh, I hope to leave this place uh, wealthy and, okay. uh, and hopefully come back to France. So that. first three months you came to Dubai, how does it uh, run me through it? How, how does it look like for you? What's the main discoveries, the main breakthroughs you had when coming here? I was very impressed when I arrived. I remember arriving in, a, in an area called GLT. 
that's where my friends were living and uh, and this area is like there is big buildings but it doesn't it's not like the most uh, fancy area in Dubai it's like it's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice neighborhood but I remember like just going to the balcony and looking at it and being like wow Dubai which like <laughs> afterward you see that it's like it's it's, it's, it's not the most like yeah, yeah. It, it's not the craziest you can get here but no I was impressed about that I met I got lucky to meet uh, amazing people very early um, regarding work and so I joined the, I, I mean from the situation where I was um, broke I was making a bit of video in France I was trying to, to survive I got a great job in a super interesting company with a very good salary the most challenging and, in, and smart boss that I ever got so how did you get this job what job was it uh, connections uh, I, I met a girl in a party I told her about what I was uh, about my previous experience and she was working in a, a strategy consulting firm that was doing digital transformation innovation and so I mentioned a bit about my background and the methodologies that I was reading about and she was like that's crazy you would love my boss let's have a coffee and and just click wow. and that that's what I've happened I've ne I never had to send any resume and I've done like four different jobs before building my own company in Dubai it's always through connection and always like you meet someone you work a bit with them they like what you do they take you from that previous company and I've been honestly like go I've been with the flow since I arrived here I've been surfing a wave and I will keep on surfing it as long as things work things work mm -hmm. and same for what I'm doing today I'm just like good connection, getting back to people and... Uh, Do you have sometimes the fear that it could stop any day? Uh, no, I don't. I, I feel like I, I have the fear of like... Because I'm telling you that because it's kind of the... Yeah. Also the cliche that uh, you're that an immigrant. Stopped. Yeah, you're an immigrant. You don't have like a, uh, the nationality. So you don't have work for three months, let's say. Uh, you have to come back to your country. So... I mean, th th there are ways around and if I have to of come course. back to my country, my country is beautiful and I will be very happy to be there. So that's completely fine. I will be happy to spend more time with my friends, my family. So, I mean, the end goal is to come back to France. Okay. So, no, I think I would, I, I don't think about that overall. What I, I was lucky to um, meet a lot of people, build a strong network, uh, build myself also over the past few years. I feel super confident about my capabilities, what I can offer to companies. So, I, I know how to make money if I need to. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not that scared. I'm just again like almost fearless. I, I, yeah, I mean the same way when you're an entrepreneur, you jump into things without. At least for me, I, I don't really think about the risk or what could happen. I just yeah. get things done and, and and move forward. So no, I don't have such fear. So you did four different jobs before mm -hmm. uh, getting to entrepreneurship. What was the different jobs? The the evolution looking? Uh, three actually. Uh, I think. Three. Okay. Um, so I started um, doing digital transformation, which honestly was a bit blurry for me because I was just coming from uh, uh, building a recruitment platform to talking about working on like the the, the transform the digital transformation of large organization and government. So it was a bit abstract for me. So somehow um, I was happy to help the company shift towards more innovation, which is how you build new ventures, how you create, basically like helping the same type of clients, um, large organization and, uh, and governments to build innovative companies to, to foster innovation and entrepreneurship within their organization. So that has been great. I was working for the Abu Dhabi government. I was working for HSBC for a lot of brands, even some very strange projects that are, I don't know if I can talk about them too much, but uh, that are related to anti-terrorism in Saudi Arabia, working on the military base though. So wow. completely crazy uh, crazy experience but mostly I've been helping entrepreneurs build their company uh, for, for a few years um, and I've been working a bit with a group called the Shalou group here in the region uh, and, I, and I've been supporting their entrepreneurship program so they wanted to get more more people from the group more employees of the group to build their own company and so I created a series of workshops for them um, I, I've been driving those workshops and they asked me to join uh, to lead innovation and growth uh, within their innovation lab which I did for a while, uh, I pushed some like projects on the inside. I was doing what a lot kind of projects. Uh, it was mostly retail-related projects. So uh, we were developing. I was supporting entrepreneurs that were building, um, like, um, let's say, uh, one is called Where That. So in the region, it's a sub subscription box where a stylist is gonna. Uh, you speak with a stylist. They're gonna make a box with some clothes for you, and you're gonna be able to trade at home and send back what you don't want. Another a subscription, subscription based. Um, I was doing also a lot of, uh, I, I've been doing some uh, acceleration programs. So the, the Shell Group has a massive distribution network. So we were just 
looking for a new beauty brands uh, in the region that one of your main is, is Sephora, right? They, they have Sephora, they have Faces, uh, they have some e-com uh, channels, but absolutely they have all of those. So we were looking at uh, also bringing some new companies that were, um, that had started, that had done a proof of concept already and helping them um, leverage the expertise of the group and the ch distribution channels to grow. So it was uh, yeah, supporting the growth of, uh, of young companies. And within this, uh, this organization, I've been a big advocate of a model called the Startup Studio, which is we were trying to, we were, at the beginning, we were leveraging people's ideas. So we we're saying like, if anybody from the group has an ID, can come and, and tell us and we can help him build it. And honestly, like an ID doesn't, is not worth much, uh, especially here, there is a lag. You see all the concepts that work very well. Uh, Noon, Karim, they're all copy yeah. part of, mod of models that already exist in yeah. the US, yeah. et cetera. So um, I was just telling them like, I can come out and I was with that with 50 ideas of startup. Yeah. Now we have the ideas, what do we do? Who's going to build them? So we need to build an in-house capability to build new um, ventures. And so the model is called the startup studio. So you, you get a, a lead that would have been myself, um, a good developer, a good designer, uh, someone that is great for marketing. You put them together and, and they work uh, with a maximum of processes to launch some new ideas as fast as possible and bring some entrepreneurs to then take the lead and keep and they will okay. keep on building them. So that's what I started doing. And I heard, of, uh, I met uh, a woman called uh, Céline Goldberg, maybe you know about her. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she absolutely. was kind, kind of doing something similar at, at was that room. Room. She was but doing with that. influencers. Yeah, like building a new uh, brand with uh, yeah, yeah, she was famous in France. She, 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 she was one of the first ones. So the group has an expertise in distribution, uh, but they don't really know. They don't really know. They, their expertise is no, not into building brands. And Céline was one of the few people in this group that was focused on building beauty brands that they were then um, distributing towards yeah. the group. So absolutely, yeah, and, yeah absolutely, anywhere. All right. And how did you transition then to, it was the last job? Or no, it was the last job. Then there was another one, uh, which is a startup called Get, Get Be in the retail, uh, retail tech company. So it was a solution that allows you to speak in real time with a store associate when you go on the luxury brands website. Uh, you start a video call, they speak with you, they have access to your basket, they can add product to your basket and sell to you in real time. And they were looking for someone to reward their products. And over anything else, um, I had told myself that it was in 2021, I think. In 2021, I didn't want to be stuck anymore in Dubai. I wanted to be able to travel. And this job was fully remote with a good salary and with the possibility to get some equity in the, in, in the company. So I joined that company. Uh, and that's the it was a Dubai based? Dubai, Dubai based that I had raised a bit more than two and a half million dollars, but still a small team of 12 to 15 people. Okay. Um, and I joined to lead the product. And from leading the product, I moved into being the chief operating officer. So kind of general manager of the, of the company. And uh, how many employees? Uh, were 15 uh, yes. at the max. So still a small, mm -hmm. small enough. But uh, for me, it was still nice to be able to, again, take some form of lead on a, on, a, on a team like this one, but I didn't have the full leadership. Uh, the company was owned by someone who also had a vision and somehow I wanted to, again, like take something from scratch, choose who I would be working with. And that's why, uh, as I was traveling all the time, I started talking about the luggage and what opportunities there were around this very special product, which at the end of the day is a box with some wheel. Yeah, there. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I became super passionate it's about it. It's treated by the, the staff the from the airport and the airline. But, but I don't know, I, 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 it, ju it just came into my mind. I wanted to build a luggage brand, it was very strange, and I had that connection with the Shalhoub group already. Uh, yeah. So I went to see uh, Michael Shalhoub, which is one of the son of, uh, of, uh, of the group owner, Patrick. And I told him about the project and he told me like, yeah, let's go, you can, uh, you, let, let's build it through the startup studio, which was the continuation of the project I had started. So I had, okay. I had been at the inception of the startup studio when I left someone took over, they continued it and I came back and leveraged what the should be like what that I had built to, oh, nice. uh, to fund my own company. And that's where I'm sitting now, trying to build something, uh, yeah, trying to build this uh, luggage brand. So uh, how is it uh, going right now, the, the luggage brand? Uh, I'm learning patience uh, <laughs> because it takes a lot of time. Uh, also balance the, pay, the, the impatience of uh, my shareholder from the Shalut group uh, who wants things to move maybe a bit faster, but it takes a lot of time. It's the first time I'm building a, a product, but I was, and I'm receiving on Tuesday the first, the first sample of, okay. uh, of After the product. How many months? One year, one, one year of work. Uh, I mean, it's been, a, I mean, it, it's quite a long process, but in the meantime, I think it's the right amount of time. Yeah. Um, 
there is a very a lot of time to try to iterate on the concept that would be uh, very powerful for the product, um, which is the original ID uh, came from, I mean, I was always traveling. Whenever I travel, I open my luggage, I drop it in the corner of the room. Yeah. And that's how I live. So I, li I spent, as I was a digital nomad, I spent two years with a messy luggage in the corner of my room. Um, and, uh, and at some point I was in Oslo, my father lived there. So I was in his apartment. I was looking at, uh, at my luggage and I started thinking about the old wardrobe trunks, which were, um, in French, it's Malarmoire, like those luxury brands, Vuitton, Goyard, they used to make those like super yeah, yeah. trunks. And I was like, they are actually like, Louis Vuitton was just that at the beginning. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like Louis Vuitton and Goyard, both uh, those two like luxury brands from France, they were both trunk makers at the beginning. So I started getting interested in this product and uh, and just thought like I, I would like to bring something like that to life for me was traveling all the time to keep myself organized. Uh, and that's why the name of the brand is Armoire, the luggage brand that I'm building in reference to that. And I got very interested by those old trunks and their functionality. And I tried to really reproduce uh, um, the same type of organization that you would get there, but I had to face a lot of complexity, the weight limit, the size of the cabin. So it took me a, lot, a bit of time to find the perfect balance between organization, something that would be modular, smart enough. So a lot of time on design, a lot of time on finding the right manufacturer. Um, so I've been traveling back and forth. Talking about balance, yeah. how do you balance this entrepreneurial uh, project with uh, your friendships, your life, your fiance? Uh, compared to maybe what you had did in the past when you were 21 years old and you had to give up everything and you kind of felt nothing was left after that, yeah. after you lost your your company and your um, uh, relationship at this time? I think I have this kind of the same balance as even when I was an employee. What I have more is the stress. Uh, so I put much more pressure on myself, but I'm still able to... I don't know, to find a balance, to spend some time with uh, my fiancé, to be able to spend some time with my friends. Um, but I think I'm, I live with a lot of balance. What is more complex is the amount of pressure I put on myself to be able to access. Um, mm. I mean, I've, I've, I've wanted, I built a company a while ago. It failed when I was, I mean, that I failed when I was 26. I'm 32. I've been supporting a lot of, of entrepreneurs. I want to, I want to build something great that people will love. I want to, um, to get enough money to be um, to be settled, to be able to buy a nice house, and to be able to um, select projects that are not necessarily financially driven, but that are more um, that are more per that are more, more purpose, which I could do now, but I'm not doing at this point. Um, so I put a lot of pressure on myself, and that's the hardest. But when it comes to the balance, it's fine. I mean, you, yeah, I, I don't know many entrepreneurs that are not close to burnout at some point I've yeah. been uh, so I take some breaks when I need them and uh, try to yeah to remain balanced and kind of the 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 fact of being with the, your shareholders in this uh, startup studio kind of helps to a lot. have more balance than if you were alone or uh, with uh, maybe a investment fund that is not uh, I'm, I'm, ex I'm extremely supported I'm extremely supported and uh, and this is some of those people that are supporting me behind the scene. They are my previous colleagues. They are my friends. So I'm, I'm, there is a lot of um, friendship. Um, yeah, there is a lot of friendship, respect, love, even mm -hmm. like I, I, feel, I feel very well supported. It's a family group. Uh, I know most of the family members from this, yeah. uh, from this um, family owned group. You know, I, feel, I feel like I'm in a safe environment. I need to protect myself. Uh, and by, because it's business at the end of the day, so I need to make sure that I get the right uh, terms in what I'm doing. But no, uh, luckily, luckily I'm supported by them, and I'm also supported by people that have been interested in what I'm doing. Um, I, I, I raised uh, not a lot of money, around one hundred thousand dollars through the through the group, so that allowed me to pay myself, uh, which I was again very lucky to be able to do, like pay yeah. myself for yeah. close to a year and pay my industrial designer, my prototype. So. Probably a mix of those. Um, and that helped us a topic, so it helped a lot. Uh, and and talking about friendship, let's uh, dive into that. Yeah. Uh, enough talking about business. That sounds good. <laughs> it's Sunday. So. Uh, yeah, it's Sunday. So, what would you say is uh, an experience that uh, completely changed your life? Yeah. I don't know if there is one. I know I, I think that there is something a bit specific. Another thing a bit specific uh, with me that I've been to eight different schools, uh, medium school and high school. So I was changing every single year. 
Why, uh, why is that? I think I was not really adapted to the scholar system and I was super, I mean, uh, like, I mean, yeah, I was just like full of energy. I couldn't just stay in the room and wait. And, uh, and it was extremely frustrating. So every year I was just changing, going to boarding school and then going back, I mean, getting kicked out of the tooth. So I went to eight different schools, which forced me into um, building some strong capacity of adaptation. And I've been to like public school in more like poor um, neighborhood and in uh, private school in the richest one. So I've been able to just play around and, uh, and, um, and, and just find my way to connect in every social class, in every type of environment. Um, so I think that's probably what has made me, so it's not one single event, it's a series of events yeah. that build me to a, a person that connects very um, simply with people. And actually, and I, and I love that. Um, yeah. uh, that's probably what's the most specific about the app. Other crazy experience. Yeah. I don't know if they've had that much of an impact okay. on who I am today. You think it's, it's the more defining one for your... Actually, it's uh, kind of thanks to that that you're here today. You accepted the, yeah. to be the first guest of the podcast and that, 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 that kind of match. I mean, there is other, uh, there's other things and, uh, that are not very popular in this region that are around psychedelics. Okay. Uh, and some experiences that have been, again, as I've seen my parents into uh, a quest, they have done, uh, both of them, they've done ayahuasca in Peru. So I've seen them doing everything that you can try. And the first time I, uh, I discovered psychedelics, which I luckily don't do too much when I'm here, but that is something that I see as, a, as an open door uh, um, to your inner self. Uh, that's something that I want to pursue. I'm actually like giving some money uh, annually to the French Psychedelic Association that is doing some medical research around it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I just see an interest into that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, there is like um, explorers that were going through the sea. I like the idea of explorers that are like diving on the inside. So something that again is, uh, is gonna be a driver for the rest of my life. I've seen my parents uh, doing meditation and finding other ways to accept accept yeah. in herself. Uh, but when we were discussing some of those experiences that I've been through and I've taken the most like powerful psychedelic in the world, like which is called DMT, which is the there yeah. is nothing. I mean, there is other mixing, but I think higher than that. And the experience we were able to have like open discussion about around it with my parents, and um, that were highlighting like similarities with also some of the readings uh, around duality, around the ego and lots of topics. So I don't know, that's also another... Uh, so what is the, the effect supposed to be like making a new connection in uh, connections in your brain, like uh, connecting uh, thoughts and memories that were not connected before, creating uh, new pathways? Is, the, is that it? The, the, the DMT specifically, it's supposed to... Um, you're supposed to experience co something called a breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, so you're supposed to separate or make your ego disappear. So the notion of self disappear and you take part of like the universe, the everything. So I, di I didn't have the opportunity to break through. A lot of yeah. people for the first time don't like dissociate with their ego, but I, I, I've had an experience which is a bit strange to explain, but basically I, I was within myself. It's a short experience. It lasts only 15 minutes and I was able to like deep dive into myself. And I was separated from my safe so with, so from myself. So somehow within me, I was able to see me, Martial, who I am as a construction. But beside this construction, like feeling, um, I mean, the, the most, uh, what can I say? I, the, I mean, just being part of the everything, it's very strange to, uh, it's a bit strange to explain, uh, even more strange to experience. So it was more like feelings and thoughts than really like uh, experiencing like uh, like with your like you would with your eyes like you would see your yourself uh, yeah, no, from outside nothing nothing yeah it's more like uh, uh, thinking yeah. i mean uh, it's, it's quite strange to see how a small molecule can completely yeah. change your perce perception of thing and in a quest of uh, like understanding of this big mystery that we're living into like understanding that you can perceive things extremely differently and feel a much deeper connection with mm, what's here uh, i mean that has been uh, I mean, again, it's an, it's, an, it's an opening door for my spirituality with or without um, mm -hmm. any substances, but I'm a bit curious about it. And do you see any difference between living in France versus here in Dubai, where it's a Muslim country, so more religious country? Uh, overall? Overall in your life, does it impact something or...? No, I think that it's... Uh, oh, that the country is incredibly open-minded. So, no, I, 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 don't see, I don't see a difference, honestly. I think that I love that there is a cultural ground and that there is a religious ground that you also have in France. I've been to Catholic school in France. 
it might be a bit more present here, but for me, it was also an opportunity to break some cliche. I don't think I had too much, but I got the opportunity to work here for the, for the government and, be, and, and for the first time of my life to comfort myself to, for example, women wearing hijab. Uh, and I was, uh, again, it broke all the, all, all the small, tiny ideas that I could have around the hijab. I saw some women that were um, beautiful, full of personality, even the way they were dressing. I saw them much more of the detail of, of, of what they were. And I mean, they had like power, responsibilities, personality, super open-minded. So now I, overall, uh, I don't see a difference. I feel like I'm free to, um, to live my way. There is all religion living here. Uh, you can be in an elevator hearing some guy speaking in Hebrew. Uh, you have Catholic people, you have Hindu, there yeah. is an Hindu church just next to my place. I don't know. Okay. Honestly, I don't see it. I feel like it's a great, great melting pot and, uh, and that's just a very open-minded. Uh, How does it feel to hear like the, the, the museum of the, in the, the mosque? Do you hear it from your, your house? Not this one, but I've heard it before uh, from other places I and mean, I like it. I think it's, I think it's nice. I love, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I I'm, I'm very fine with it. I, I don't have a specific connection with any re religion yeah. or another one, but I love speaking with people that are into their religion and that are living it and that are not just following it, but also experiencing it. And, uh, and that are, I mean, I, I've had a lot of discussion yeah. with uh, Muslims a lot here in the country and uh, I love their relation to, li to, to life and to religion, which I would love to get. I haven't been able to fall in love or to be caught by any form of religion. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my quest as your father yeah. and as you, my, I, I don't, I don't know your personal situation, but you know, it's uh, yeah. But I'm asking that because it, I felt like in France there is kind of a um, people of uh, the site, the society in general is kind of against uh, pr uh, how do you say that the uh, proselytism, proselytism maybe in English, the fact of uh, talking too much of your religion and yeah. it's very private in France and it's kind of. Uh, Yeah, kind of hard to even with friends sometimes to talk about it in not uh, not making fun of it or just to to talk about it in surface, but really go deep. It's kind of hard, and I feel like here it's uh, yeah more more open. And since everyone has a like a lot of people have a different religion, it's yeah. kind of easy to talk about this. There's no taboo, I think, around no, also. No, I, I don't think there is, but I, I mean. Yes, there is definitely some taboo in France around religion that are very different. Yeah, I don't, again, I can, I can feel it when I watch the TV and when I watch some people and their relation to religion or that there is something there. At my personal level, I never really felt that and I never got into interactions that were bringing either of any form of tension of judgments around someone's religion. Mm. Um, and yeah, when you talk about pr proselytism, I mean, um, I, I wouldn't want someone to go like all in on me and try to really convince me. Yeah, but I, I, I love the fact that someone can tell me about what is going through his relation to God. And I think there is truth. I mean, within everything, however you call it, whatever the book is, um, there is an element of common truth between all those religions. So as long as I'm not like at my personal level pushed into like, this is the truth yeah. and you need to, you need to adhere to it. I'm super open. What do you value the most in friendship? None. Ah, I don't even. I, I don't think I've ever asked myself that question. Why do a I lot of people have friends for uh, that are completely different for different occasions or but like when you feel bad, you have one type of friend, and another type of friend when you feel good to have a great time, and maybe they're not the same, and it's okay. Yeah, I, I would say, I would say there is one thing I don't like to say on the surface. I just okay. I I, I, I like to have like deep conversations, okay. moments, uh, uh, deep exchange. I'm not debating too much with my friend, but I love to um, just deep dive into a, our vision of the world. I like when there is an element of, if not spirituality, something, again, a deeper meaning with the people that I'm uh, spending time with. In the meantime, I have some stupid friends with whom we like to like box uh, and, and do, do and party and stuff. So yeah, but it's deep through the experience rather than the, yeah. the, to the talk, like the discussion. Yeah, but it's uh, no, no, not such a simple question. And, and for a long time, all of my friends were telling me that uh, it was their, their joke that I loved everyone, that I was friends yeah. with everyone. And somehow I had a little bit of that. Uh, I don't know, like I was genuinely interested to learn and to find what was good and interesting in any, I mean, in anyone. So I don't have like enemies. I don't have people that I judge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, maybe I... 
I like to have people that are, let's say, smart or deep or that are, I don't know, a bit, a bit driven around me. So yeah. I'm well surrounded on that. Yeah. So let's say you have uh, some great news tomorrow. I don't know. the Your first product is uh, the hit. Mm -hmm. I would love that. Of course, you, I, I think you would tell your fiancé. Yeah. But after that, who's the friend you would like to share this uh, victory with? It, actually, I, I was thinking about that. The, the, pers the friend that I called the most uh, living in Dubai and being far away is my father. Okay. So is is the person that I call the most and with whom I'm speaking the most. So I think I would tell my dad uh, sure. number one. Um, But do you feel like in friendships, it's kind of admitted that friends are here for the the to support you in uh, when you feel bad. But when you feel good, and it's kind of sometimes I feel kind of braggy, like uh, calling a friend and uh, telling him about my success, etc. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, I think there's a kind of weird feeling in. In those uh, moments, no, in sports, uh, not, not, not everybody, not everybody loves the. I mean, we're all in our own quest, and not everybody loves the success of others. I'm part of those who have been super, always super supportive, and that whenever someone close or even a bit further is um, getting a great achievement, I mean, I love that. I love listening to stories of people that are successful. But I have also a small part of myself sometimes where I could be a bit jealous. I've been, I started my company when I was very young. At the same time, we're a bunch of. Uh, French entrepreneur in the same type of ecosystem and some of them have been super successful uh, and they're still growing the companies that they started building 10, 10 years ago. Uh, so I could feel within myself a little bit of jealousy sometime and in the meantime, I mean, they're amazing, they're doing a great job. So like the joy uh, where their journey is taking over. So I think even for some, peop for some people, the balance is a bit different. They might be happy for you, but they're also, um, there is, I mean, The way they behave with you would be also a reflection of their self, of their own yeah, yeah. frustration, of their own, uh, yeah, um, I would say, impression. And uh, what do you think is the important ingre ingredient in friendships to create like mutual worth, to avoid being uh, drunk down by jealousy and this type of stuff? Like uh, selling them, uh, select them well. Um, I think I have. I've had some people around me uh, over the past few years where I could feel like the intentions that were given were not the right one. My expectations were not met in terms of them being here for me when something important was happening. And I move forward. And I think sometimes in life it's also good to, like, we, we're, we're not, I mean, in my case, I'm not 18 years old anymore. I'm not, I don't need to f be friends with everyone. Uh, my relationship is taking me a lot of time. My work is taking me a lot of time. So I'm just... Uh, I just know what I need, and if I'm not getting um, what I need from the people that surround me, I will just I just don't have time to to spend with them. So I think the selection of the people, and you can be, and I wouldn't say like staying with your old friends necessarily. I'm in Dubai, and I was talking about that with my fiance recently. Like over the past two years, I've met some people that entered my life and that are now some of my best friends. So it can just happen. Just need to wait for uh, something that I mean. A true powerful click um, between two people. How how can we uh, explore more that that uh, what you describe as a click? How how do you? Uh, I I don't know. I, I, how does it, is, is it random completely or is it something you could? Uh, I like the I like the notion of flow. Uh, you know when you yeah, say, uh, I'm going with the flow. You're just like in the in the in your zone of comfort. Everything yeah. is going like flawlessly. For me, that's w w when I meet someone and things are just going like. It's a vibe and I don't need to force anything. That's where I feel like that's what I want. It doesn't mean that those people will have the best, the best intention and that you will end up being best friend. But at least that's the first start. If I can be my true self, if I can speak about the topics that I care about, if I can go deeper uh, in, 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 into, our com into conversation, into, again, the topics that I value and we can do the same in both ways and there is a mutual interest, it flows and then uh, that's yeah. the rest and that's how I pursue it. Right. And, and how do you met, meet like uh, this person? Is it uh, having friends helps having more friends? Friends of friends. Yep. Most But how would you advise someone that is just coming to Dubai? He's just with his uh, his wife, his fiance, and he doesn't know many people. Uh, to do a podcast and invite him to do a podcast. That that could be that could be a good way. I mean that that's a smart approach to do it. I mean so, yeah. somehow you're also doing a bit of that with your podcast. You're yeah. meeting new people and you build yeah, that type of connection. Totally the purpose. And, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, what else? I mean, there is there is like degree zero. Like there is some groups. There is sport. <coughs> uh, there is a lot of. I mean, 
play people playing paddle, people doing a lot of sport activities. I mean, sport is a great way I connect with people. Uh, so you join, you join some clubs, some groups. Work is a, is a good place. Some people like to put a bit more of a barrier and balance, but I think through work, you can meet amazing people. And for example, those, those people you met in the last two years, where did you meet them? Um, I mean, there is, there is a mix, mostly through friends. Okay, so friends of the, friends. the very good friends, uh, through friends, but also through work, honestly. I got okay. like a massive bromance with one of the guys that I was working with. Okay. Like, he's su such, a good, such a good friend now. And so, yeah, it's, I would say, a combination of, uh, I mean, you, 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 don't, you don't know when those type of, uh, like, click, when, when those type of connection happen. So, just uh, randomly, I would say. But you need to be lucky enough or to force to put yourself into an yeah, environment where you can meet people and not just stay behind the computer. Yeah, stay at yeah. Home because obviously, yeah. it will never click with That's anyone if you don't meet anyone. But uh, as I was mentioning to you at the beginning of the thing, and, and you, you have probably a little bit of that also, I'm an outgoing person. I like to go out, meet people, and I'm not afraid of stepping up. So for people that are more introvert um, and that don't have already some connections, it might be a bit more complex, I guess, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like people that are introvert, they're not necessarily, uh, it's not hard for them to talk one-to-one -to, -one to someone yeah. and have this click. It's more being around many people. It, like I, I, I kind of see like introvert, extrovert. Yes. Like me and my fiance, we are kind of of the opposite on that. I'm extrovert. So when I meet you now, it's, it, it's giving me a more energy than I had before. But my, my fiance, Sarah, is, she's the opposite. If she does this, After that, she has to go to sleep because she's, uh, she's, she's, it's taking a lot of energy yeah. from her. And so going to a party with many people is going to be even harder for her. Or she's going to be like in some corner. And if you go to her and talk to her one-to-one, -one, maybe it's going to work. But yeah, I feel it's kind of... Uh, there, is a, there is a lot of setup I mean, yeah, for exactly. extrovert or extrovert. Exactly. I think activities are great. Yeah, uh, playing backgammon. <laughs> for example, I mean, there is... I mean, I'm not part of this uh, part of this club. There is this place called Arts Club in Dubai, which is okay. a kind of this private club where a lot of you see a lot of people working from there. They also go there to build connection within a specific social uh, setup. So, I mean, the, the membership is quite expensive. So they know who they will find there. And it, we're in a business city, so people do that. And they have bad government competitions. Oh, also. yeah. Like, I think not on monthly basis, but from time to time. And so, yeah. I, mean, I never played bad I only play, uh, I discovered last uh, Ramadan, the... A, a game that is popular here, it's called uh, uh, Jackao. I've never heard of never it. Never heard of it? I don't know. Yeah, it's, so it's kind of like, uh, in France, we have a jeu de loi. Yeah. Uh, so you have a, a color and you have to go the, around the whole board. But instead of uh, playing with the, the les dés, comment, how do you say that in English? Uh, the, the Good <laughs> question. <laughs> throwing the, the, the square Dice. thing. Dice, Dice exactly. Uh, throwing dice it's with cards so and it's kind of like uno you know where you have one card that you can go like 10 uh, uh, so if it's a 10 you can go 10 uh, uh, 10 uh, forward but also you can use it to uh, make the the uh, one of the person not play the, the next game etc it's very funny and it was like out of stock for like more than I think the game. at least yeah six six months after We discovered it. We went to any mall. It was out of stock. I had the same experience trying to find the most beautiful backgammon game oh, yeah. so everywhere. You were mentioning Morocco. Uh, the father of my fiance he lives in Marrakech. So we were going through ar around Marrakech to find the best backgammon. And finally, everywhere we were going, we were trying to find like a beautiful piece of backgammon. And we bought one in uh, in uh, Turkey, in Istanbul, in a soup. So now we're yeah, we have this beautiful game. Wow. But uh, I think we've played a bit too much. We need to learn to play chess. I mean. We're trying to learn on the phone, but... Uh. Uh, my next question was, um, yeah, well, um, how do you handle um, honesty in difficult situations with, uh, with a friend? It's not so simple. Uh, right. And I don't think that I practice it every time. Uh, okay. Uh, so you lied? <laughs> I, I, I would call it omission sometimes. It's, there is some... There is some truth that are hard to hard to tell, and you kind of feel sometimes when people are willing to receive it or not, and giving certain truth to certain people, um, you kind of know in advance when they won't be it won't be accepted, and that you can risk your relationship, and somehow that's really, in that relationship you can impact positively the person you, you give and you receive, 
So putting that at risk, it happened to me a few times to uh, communicate, I mean, over communicate a bit, uh, a feeling about a certain situation for a friend. And that was not accepted in, at all. And yeah, it, it kind of hurt its own relationship too. Honesty, I love to receive things with honesty, but I think you need to be very careful with how you communicate things. Sometimes not to hurt uh, but too much. Do I practice full honesty? I don't know. It's hard. Not necessarily. I heard this uh, actually it's funny because I saw it like one hour ago and on a short uh, video. Uh, I don't know if you know Simon Sinek. Yeah, I, actually, yeah, I, I did the final why. Uh, yeah, and he was talking about it and he said, basically, he was talking about a friend that had a, did a play and he went to see the play and it was horrible. So instead of going to her, like uh, after the, the show, she was uh, wearing the makeup and she was with, pumped with adrenaline. And uh, instead of telling her at this moment, okay, I didn't like it, even if she asked her, him, he said, uh, okay, I, I felt like it, she was not ready to receive the news at this moment, but I was not going to lie to her either. So I said, oh, it was amazing to see you on stage and to see you uh, for the first time on stage and to see you alive like this, etc. And then he waited a few days to, the, to, to, to have her in a more calm uh, context. Yeah. And then he explained to her like very like point by point yeah. why he didn't like the, the play. And they had a really uh, like um, growth uh, oriented uh, discussion instead of, uh, you know, when you are in the moment sometimes. Uh, so I kind of relate like sometimes you will have this friend who will meet with uh, somebody and he's in love and, and you feel like it's not the greatest person for him. But you can tell him in the moment, maybe you have to wait for it to uh, unfold a little bit and when you feel it's the right time you can tell him I, there's can, maybe the, the 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 key is timing i think so yeah I and mean, again you 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 want people to i, I have my mother who's the most like direct straight to the point person she will always like oh always tell what she thinks good or bad i mean which is great when it's great which is yeah I mean, when it's not good um and it kind of works and she's like i don't really care about hurting people feeling what i care is the end result and so she would not but if she loses a friend, if she hurts somebody on the point, the only purpose of the communication that she's having with the person is to let them grow um, and yeah, grow, grow from their current situation. Yeah, but sometimes people are, are not ready to grow. Uh, even, I mean, I have even my, my younger sister, she was, when she was working on some project, a few times I tried to give my opinion uh, on how she should do it and she just bashed me completely and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I know, I know with whom I can communicate, with whom I can be more or less direct. But yeah, I don't know if I'm in always in full honesty. If that's uh, what you were saying, just because I don't it, somehow I don't want to hurt people. I, I have a lot of opinions, but I tend to just uh, again like yeah. th tell them at least pretty softly. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's not easy, of course. No. All right, last question. What are you the most grateful for um, in your life? I think I'm very happy overall because I'm just grateful for life. It's a, it's a bit cliche, but uh, I wake up very often just, I mean, I'm very surprised and very curious about the mystery we live in. Uh, I feel like I'm so blessed. I grew up in a great family with love and respect. And also, I think on the right side of the world, I, I, I was never missing anything. I was telling about the moment when I was in between my companies and I was eating just one meal a day. It lasted three months. And if I, if I wanted, I would have asked my grandmother, she would have cooked amazing food for me every day. So I was, I was, I'm blessed to be a human. I'm blessed to have grown up in the environment where I am. I'm blessed to be so well surrounded with friends and love. And I'm blessed to be able to work on a, a project that I've chosen. And just again, like I'm, I'm creating my own path of life um, without trying to trick anyone, without doing anything wrong with, by in the meantime, trying to be as good as possible with everybody around me. So, and I'm, I'm blessed and I try to, again, like give this blessing back to people. Um, something like that. All right. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you very much.